What is good, everybody? It is your boy, Pat, the designer, back at it again. How y'all feeling? Today, today's a special day. I got to bring in my brother, man. Right? Y'all got to understand, y'all know them friends you got that, like, you ain't never met, and y'all may hang out once or twice in a lifetime. That's my man's right here, man. My man, Luca Rosano from the Waterboy Report. Luca, how you feeling, Brody? What is going on, man? It is my honor to be here, man. I feel like I've known you forever, and this is like our first time doing a hit together. Bro, it's crazy. I feel like we've done, we've had so many conversations about sports so many times, and we've never actually linked up on nothing, so it's so dope to finally be able to, man. Um, I know you got to run, man, so I'm going to get right into the topics. Uh, You know what the main topic is, man. For y'all that don't know, Luca at the Waterboy Report is from Toronto, Canada. He's had an exciting uh, summer to say the least um, But he's also had a little bit of misery In his life uh, <laughs> How is the vibe In Canada right now That Kawhi Leonard chose LA over Toronto uh, I think it's uh, More you know A feeling of disappointment and being Sad over being mad Because we won the championship how can you Be mad at a guy like that who Wants to go back home and play for an organization Who, is, who he was rumored to play with For so long so right. it's not like fans Are calling for his head and bashing him Like there's no negative stigma like there was When KD left the uh, OKC Thunder For instance it's more so of like Ah oh, damn like disappointed Sad feeling right. but I mean We won the championship which which helps a lot Because I, I'll tell you man like If we went to the final and lost that final and then he left the way he did Oof. then we probably would have had more of that mad feeling come out of the vibe here in toronto i feel you on that bro now now question based off of that would you is he going to be viewed forever as king in toronto even though he left because i feel like if he this year of course if he walks in there he's not paying for a beer a meal or anything anywhere But do you think that carries on further down the road? I think so. I think ultimately it'll depend on who you ask because there's a mixed reaction of guys saying, oh, we only did it for one year. You got to give credit to other players on the team. I mean, it wasn't just the Kawhi show, whereas I'm one of the people saying it was the Kawhi show. (laughs) He's the reason why we won the damn championship. He's the reason why we're relevant now as a basketball city as it pertains to winning championships. I mean, he'll forever be immortalized. His legacy will live on. And uh, it's only a matter of time until, you know, we retire his jersey. And I personally believe he he does deserve a statue. I'll go as far as saying, saying that. Wow. I mean, if the man can bring a championship to a city for the first time ever, I mean, that's legendary stuff, right. man. That is just stuff you can't sweep under the rug. You got to talk about that forever. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen. 110% agree with you, bro. Now, are you, are you on, I've heard this stigma coming out of Toronto. There's still people that are hailing Vince Carter over Kawhi. Where do you stand? Is Kawhi greatest Raptor ever? Ooh, that is such a tough question. And you see the Vince Carter jersey retired on my wall behind me. 100%. Oh man, that's a tough question. I think for they they represent different uh, you know different significances, if you will, because Vince Carter is the reason why basketball became popular to begin with here in the city. But then Kawhi Leonard has the identity and will forever be known as the guy who brought a championship here. I mean. I mean, on an all-time scale, you got to put, I guess, Kawhi over uh, Vince Carter because what do we measure athletes in this day and age? It's winning. It's if you can perform on the biggest stage and get the job done. And the truth of the matter is Kawhi Leonard was able to do that. Vince Carter was not. We all remember the infamous miss, you know, second round against Philly. Kawhi Leonard resurrected that, you know, 18 <laughs> years later. It was crazy how that all panned out. But um, I, I think it's going to be dependent, again, on who you ask. But I think for me right now, it's still... Vince from a significant standpoint, but I think over time it will be Kawhi who maybe gets more of the respect than Vince did because of the fact that he won the championship here in Toronto. Now, for me personally, but I'm I'm not in the city, but for me personally, Kawhi's shot versus Philly was the greatest thing that happened in this playoffs, even over winning the championship. Because I think that that... It was like a completed story. Vince Carter missed that exact same shot. And Kawhi hit that exact same shot, fading away. Joel Embiid's hand in his face. How do you, are you going to remember the shot more than anything? Or are you going to be more on the, we want to ring, the whole thing was great? 
I'm gonna remember the shot because that is a good point. The way that happened, you'll never see anything like that again. Just like, you know, the magnitude of the moment, first ever buzzer beater at the, you know, in a game seven that ever took place. It took four bounces before it found the bottom of the rim. I mean, that was crazy. You couldn't have scripted that. <laughs> that was beyond belief. So I will remember that shot because in essence, that shot is the reason why we got to the championship. Obviously, we had to beat Milwaukee, but that shot led us to the championship, which we won. And I'll go as far as saying this, and a lot of people kind of, you know, looked at me the wrong way. I think if Philly were to win that game seven, it would have been Philly and the Warriors in the final. And I really think we would be seeing the Sixers right now as champions if that game seven shot never went in. That's a different discussion. Wow. But going back to your question, I will remember the shot versus the championship, but the championship will always obviously have a special place in my heart as well. Hey, I'm I'm glad y'all got one. You know why? I'm Vince Carter is my favorite player of all time. So like him, probably unless he goes to a team that ring chases, like he's probably not gonna get one. That kind of makes me sad. So Toronto winning one is my second. That's like it's a little consoling for me too. I I feel like we all got a little closure from this, but. <laughs> I do got to agree with you on that point. It's going to suck because I do want Vince Carter to win that ring. And I really oh. wish he was on this past uh, team of ours. That would have been awesome. Oh to win God. a championship with VC on the team, like that would have been picture perfect. And and there was talk about bringing him back just on a little minimum money contract just to have a body off of the bench. So that it would have been great to see, man. That would have been a great thing. Now, unfortunately, Kawhi does choose L.A. over Toronto. Do you like the way that the NBA is coming up next year over previous years? I feel like there's a little bit more stability. How do you feel about that? Uh, just well, in terms of what? Just like player uh, movement? Um, like we, we've seen so many. I, I think Kawhi's one move changed the face of the NBA so much. You think about it. PG goes with him. Um, Russell Westbrook's probably on the move to go to a team with only one superstar. Or star, you're talking maybe Jimmy Butler, maybe James Harden. Um, you got LeBron and AD. Really, we can't count Boogie as a superstar anymore. Um, you've got Steph and Clay. You've got so I feel like the NBA is a lot more balanced. Do you feel like this upcoming NBA season will be one of the better seasons we've seen, or are you more of a fan of that super team generation? No, no. So I, I completely agree with what you just said. Um, the balance is great, and I mean I haven't been this genuinely excited about an NBA season for quite some time because I think we can officially say goodbye for now to the traditional three superstar super team. Mm -hmm. Now it's all about the duels like you just named. I mean, you got like five, six, seven teams that got two good all-stars on their team and you got now a season where you got a couple of contenders in years past, it was pretty much just like Golden State and then everybody else. Now it's like the Clippers can make a run. The Lakers can make a run. Then in the East, it's wide open. You got the Sixers, <laughs> the Bucks. You know, uh, like it's it's going to be a very action-packed season. I think it's going to be one of those truly remarkable campaigns where, you know, we'll get a few surprises in the playoffs and then we'll see how it all pans out. But I think this is great for the NBA and it's just a, a fresh of breath air considering what we had to go through the past couple of seasons with uh, the whole non-parity story that is the Golden State Warriors, you know, running rampant, uh, you know, um, taking down so many teams and, and kind of that being a foregone conclusion, at least now. Yeah, outside of like the Clippers and the Lakers of the world, you really don't know what to expect. Right. I, I, I fully agree with you. Um, I, I, I do have to thank Kawhi for one thing. Him leaving probably gets the Bulls into the playoffs because it basically made the East um, a top-heavy conference. How does he compete out West? With that team we saw last year with the Clippers, we saw Pat Bev, we saw uh, um, a lot of heart on that team, a lot of fight in that team, but they didn't have the star. Now they have the star. How did the L.A. Clippers shape up against the rest of the Western Conference? As of now, Pat, I got to be honest with you, they're my favorites to win the title. I absolutely love their team. I think they're going to go down as one of the best defensive teams we've ever seen. I mean, you got the two best two-way players arguably on the same team right now in Kawhi and Paul George you mix that with a guy like Beverly you got Harrell and Lou Will coming off the bench like 
it's it's such a perfect mix of players that all these guys they play the same brand of basketball they're hard-nosed guys they go about their business they're not loud mouths they just go out and let their game do the talking i love this clippers team and i really think they're gonna win a, a championship if not this season the next season uh before obviously Kawhi leonard can uh get out of his deal but i really like this clippers team and i like them now uh more so than i do the lakers as constructed i i, I do I, I kind of agree with you. I'm still, I can't write Golden State off just yet. I'll be late to that train. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and Draymond Green did it, but I always go back to that. They did it by themselves the first time. So I can't say they can't do it again, but I'm, I'm totally there with you. Uh, we got Luca Rosano here from the Waterboy Report with us for a few more minutes. Um, so as things shape up, like I said before, of course, you got your Western Conference top heavy teams. You got... Uh, possibly Houston if they acquire Russell Westbrook, or uh, um, you've got the Clippers, you've got the Lakers, arguably. You've got uh, a lot of teams out west, but the Eastern Conference is really top-heavy. How did you feel about KD coming out east with Kyrie? Does that make Brooklyn a instant contender, or they still got a little bit of work to do? I, I think it, there's still a lot of question marks surrounding that team. I wouldn't be so sure to say that they're, uh, you know, a bona fide contender and the new beast of the East because, listen, we don't know how KD is going to be when he's recovered from that injury. He's not going to play this season, so he's going to miss right. an entire season. And then, you know, you have one question mark of if we're going to get the OKD, and then the other question mark is, you know, will he and Kyrie be able to coexist? I mean, Kyrie's had his fair share of problems with other superstars in the league, particularly LeBron James, so I wouldn't necessarily necessarily write the Nets as a contender or the beast of the East right now, but they are going to be pretty damn good because, you know, you got those other young pieces that are obviously going to complement them. Right now, who I got my eye out for on, uh, you know, in terms of talking about a team to come out of the East, I got to be looking at the Sixers. I really love the Al Horford move for them. Even though they lost Jimmy Butler, I still think that's a the best starting five in the Eastern Conference. And I think Boston's going to be a lot better, man. I really believe that Kemba Walker is a better fit than uh, Kyrie Irving. And I think we're going to see the same Celtics team that we saw two years ago, the one that pushed the King to the brink of elimination, versus the team we saw this past season that was just surrounded by all these uh, off the court antics. So, uh, but the East is going to be interesting because then you still got the Bucks. You got to worry about uh, Indiana is a dark horse team. I know Oladipo won't be ready for the start of this season, but you know uh, the new year hits. Uh, Pacers are a contender. He gets right. back into the mix. I mean, it's going to be fun to watch who ultimately comes out of the East. Now, with a lot of, I, I can't get out of here without asking you a question for Ringo. He's a Miami Heat guy. Do you like the move of Jimmy Butler to Miami, or do you not view Jimmy Butler as a he-can-do-it-himself guy? I don't think he could do it himself, and I'll go as far as saying this. I wouldn't like Butler and Westbrook because those two are definitely getting to a fight. <laughs> They're not coexisting, and I really think Jimmy went to Miami because— we know he's a party guy. It's like he doesn't Miami. care about winning championships. <laughs> he's the guy who's trying to finesse the woman, have a good time. He's still he's still young, you know. So I, I I view that move for Jimmy of just trying to get the most out of his youth. But no, I don't think he'll be able to carry the heat by himself. Uh, I I agree with you. Ringo's gonna argue so much with you when he sees this thing. <laughs> but <laughs> just be prepared for a lot of backlash on that one. Um, we got you here for just a couple more minutes. I personally have viewed this offseason as a tough one, especially with Kawhi leaving for the L.A. Lakers. Um, in my opinion, I would say that the Knicks had a better offseason than the Lakers by the Knicks not getting anybody and only having cap space because the Lakers missed out on everything, including Kawhi Leonard. How do you feel about that? Uh, that's definitely bold to say the Knicks had a better offseason than the Lakers. I did like the uh, AD move, even though that was kind of not, well, it was the offseason, but not the kind past of, couple yeah. of weeks. So that to me did it. If it wasn't for the AD move, I maybe would have agreed with that statement. Uh, the Lakers are another interesting team because uh, you can't take them for granted. Yeah, they look good on paper, but there's a lot of what ifs on that team too. Boogie Cousins, is he going to be the same old Boogie Cousins? Anthony Davis, can he stay healthy during the course of a full regular season? 
LeBron James for the first time in his career went down last season. Is that going to linger possibly into this season? I don't think Danny Green is necessarily going to continue to peak. If anything, I think he's on a downhill, especially with how poorly he played this past postseason. I mean, this Lakers team, they can be good, but for as quickly as they can be good, they can also plummet. And it's going to be very interesting to see which version of that Lakers team we will see. Because right now, yeah, they look good on paper. But if injuries start to hit them early and hard, I mean, we could really see a disaster out west. That is the LA Lakers. A hundred percent agree with you, man. And that, that's that's why I feel that way, because at least the Knicks... You got your cap space. You got your, you know, you got young players. And listen, I'm seeing a lot of good young players on, on the Knicks, and I'm actually surprised. I'm like, wait, y'all did something right for once? Kevin Knox is going to be an amazing talent out east. Um, we'll pretty much close it out there, man. I appreciate you for joining me, Luca. Um, got to do it again, bro. Got to do it again, especially when we got more time. But like I, we both busy. We both got to do some running around. So I had to get this interview in with you. Appreciate you for joining me, man. Hey, Pat. I'm a big fan of your work. Keep it up, brother. And we definitely got to do this again uh, sometime soon. Thanks again for having me, man. For sure, for sure. When I grow up, I'm gonna be like you. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, we're going to get up out of here. It is your boy, Pat, the designer, joined by Luca Rosano from the Waterboy Report. Make sure y'all tune in. Make sure y'all check out his channel. He does great work. It ain't just basketball. It's all sports. This man is killing the game right now. Go subscribe. That's all I can say. Go subscribe. I'm going to get up out of here, man. It's your boy, Pat, the designer. Peace.